Okay, guys, uh, Dr. Phil here again. I'm going to go through the eye dissection um, relatively quickly, but with that caveat, I have to cut all of those muscles out. All right? <clears throat> so that's the cow eye. Santa's watching you. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut these eye muscles out. I don't know if this is left or right. Um, I could theoretically go back in here, um, <clears throat> in the back, and see if there's cranial nerve two right there between my thumbs. You see that? That's cranial nerve two. That should come out to the optic chiasm. And remember, the lateral fibers are going to stay uh, unilateral. Medial fibers are going to go contralateral. The optic chiasm through the corporate uh, quadrigemini and then to the occipital lobe for sight <clears throat> but I don't really know um, but the, the cranial nerve 2 should come in at an angle medially all right because we kind of know but like I said I don't know if this is a uh, right eye this would be superior and this would be inferior if it was a left eye um, you know contingent upon how the cranial nerves coming out cranial nerve 2 is coming out, I wouldn't know. But I'm going to literally go in and, and cut all this muscle material away. So remember, you're going to have a superior oblique, inferior oblique, uh, rectus always means straight. You're going to have like a medial rectus, lateral uh, rectus, superior oblique is going to have something to do with that. Um, trochlear, and just when you're learning the cranial nerves, just kind of have an idea while you're learning them what they generally do, because they could ask you if something is, cranial nerve two and cranial nerve one are just pure sensory. One is um, olfactory and cranial nerve two is for vision. And then I'll show you a model later about how, um, I'll, I'll walk you through how light goes through the eye, the, uh, the procedure or um, the uh, structures or anatomical spaces it goes through and then when it hits the retina, and I'll talk to you about the ganglion cells to the bipolar cells to the retina and how we're really converting that light into different energy and sending it uh, through cranial nerve two and then in its path it has to go all the way to the occipital lobe so we can have um, I should be cutting this while I'm talking uh, so we'll have some um, a semblance of vision or um, what we're seeing so I'm really not gonna I try to be careful because this looks nothing like an eye, right? So in lab on Saturday, I pulled this out and uh, everyone said it looks nothing like an eye. So I keep trying not wanting to call you guys kids, but because I was that age too, but to me, um, students. So if I call you a kid, it's not derogatory, just from my perspective. You're all young, which is good. All right, so. Just changing tools here. Okay, um, there's no number 10 really in this kit. So I'm cutting the muscle, but remember the muscle is going to be attached to the sclera. And if you look, it's very, very fibrous, very, very durable. Durable. There is some of that fibrous connective tissue. See how wispy that is, very cotton-like. See that? So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to just, you know, it can be basha, it just separates everything. I'm going to go in and just quickly 
you know, methodically try not to hack myself up here. So if you look, that is definitely muscle tissue. Okay, you can see the fibers in there. All right, good. Go around here. I'm going to just, I'm not gonna be super careful. I wanna get the majority of this off. And then uh, I'll go on to clean it up later. But I'm, if you look, I'm just literally cutting away as much of that muscle as I can. And once again, we talked about origin and insertion. This is literally going in and inserting on that sclera, which is super durable. It's got some collagen fibers for a lot of um, durability. And remember too, we want that for structure. So if the human or the cow or bovine or whatever gets hit or whatever, it has, um, the sclera is very, very durable. It's not gonna rupture the, um, I don't even, I can see, you guys can see this. I'm just not looking through the camera. So I hope I'm um, cleaning this up properly. Funny, you, I hope the camera's getting all this. Um, but yeah, so we want it for structure. We don't want it um, destroying the anterior chamber with that aqueous humor or that posterior chamber with that vitreous humor. And remember I said in class, please do not hack. When I, when I do a cut through this, a sagittal cut, I'm not gonna hack into it because I don't want that vitreous humor shooting out. It's gonna be very gelaginous. The viscosity is gonna be very, very durable. But if you look now, that looks a lot more like what you would consider to be an eyeball, right? I mean, I could really go in and tweeze this out with tweezers and clean it up, you know, really, really well, but I'm sure you guys are bored of seeing this already, but. I just want to clean away. That is cranial nerve two. That's the optic nerve that's coming right off the retina. All right, so I'll get that out of the way. <clears throat> so anterior to posterior, we're going to go cornea. When I cut this up, we're going to have the uh, anterior chamber, which is made out of aqueous humor. Aqueous means water. Humor is when you see that. I did the humors back in the day, um, even before I was born. Um, all the fluids in the body used to be called humors. All right, the eye's not breathing. I'm just putting pressure in there. So cornea, aqueous humor. Then we're gonna hit the pupil, which is not a structure. It is an anatomical space. All right, and that is for constriction or dilation, and that is controlled partially by the iris. Right? And uh, we talked about testing cranial nerves, and your eye should... <clears throat> um, dilate in low light conditions that should constrict during reading or um, focus. You know, we talked about that accommodation convergence ratio and dilation. And if you do a, um, a pen light in one eye, the other one should react equally. All right, so shining a light in the right eye should cause the left to constrict also. Okay, if not, it's called Argyle Robinson's pupil, I think, I don't remember. It's been a while, uh, but yes, I think so. So anyway, that's, uh, and then, all right, so cornea, aqueous humor, all right, pupil, this is the, for light going through, all right, the iris is gonna be right there. Then you're gonna see the crystalline lens, all right, and then right behind that, posterior to that, is gonna be that vitreous humor. That's very, very thick. That keeps the globe of the eye in shape and keeps the retina from coming forward, all right? So if somebody is very, very nearsighted, generally that globe is too long, all right? And the light doesn't focus on the retina, all right? <clears throat> so those people, you'll have to really warn them. If they're walking around or whatever, and they see something like a curtain closing on their eye, that literally is retinal detachment. That is an absolute 100% emergency. You've gotta call the ER and get an ophthalmologist to come in off the, you know, I had, uh, I forgot what her name was, Vivian somebody. She literally came in off of the golf course for a patient. It's crazy. Um, anyway, yeah, that's a immediate surgery, right? And then when the light hits the retina, it goes through the ganglion cells, to those bipolar cells. Remember we talked about all those, <clears throat> those dendrites and, and neurons and how most of them were multipolar and things like that. But the, the bipolar are 
really only in the retina in humans, and uh, there's some you know places that say it's it's in the olfactory. And remember, cranial nerve one olfactory is regenerates. It's the only one that can regenerate. All right, and then uh, <clears throat> goes to cranial nerve two, and then know the path. Cranial nerve two of the optic chiasm. Once again, lateral fibers stay ipsilateral, medial fibers go contralateral, and then uh, <clears throat> next semester you'll be talking about the anterior pituitary gland, infundibulum, how that crosses over at the optic chiasm if you have a, um, adenoma, all right, so that would be endocrine adenoma of uh, the pituitary gland. It can start compressing cranial nerve two at the optic chiasm and you can start losing um, parts of your visual field with no signs or symptoms because once again your brain is going to fill in that image you'll have no um, you'll have no sense of what's going on when I open the eye we'll talk about the chambers and remember increased pr uh, pressure in there uh, producing too much aqueous humor um, can be a problem uh, causing glaucoma and that is uh, that can cause pressure of the vitreous humor pushing on the retina causing that, I'll show you the, um, the optic disc where the cranial nerve two is, and a lot of pressure in there can cause cupping. So I brought in the uh, retinoscope and the otoscope. None of us used that, but we, if we wanted to, we could have gone in and seen that, um, the retina. Let me cut this, I'm just babbling away. We could have, I'm gonna cut this very slowly. But we could have looked at the retina and looked at the, um, where the optic nerve is. I'm gonna go anterior to posterior. I'm gonna cut away from myself, all right? <clears throat> we could have looked at that and seen all that. I'm gonna cut this very slowly. I don't understand why. All right, so I'm actually through this. You can see that. Through that. All right. Remember that cornea should be um, clear. And remember, once again, it's avascular, a meaning no vascularization, so it can be transplanted relatively easily. There's no blood supply, so there's really no rejection. All right, I don't know, in there you can see that is the crystalline lens. And it's anything but crystalline, because you gotta remember too, all the students were asking me why. This, this cow eye has been sitting in uh, formalin forever, so it's going to absorb some of that, changing. And, you know, cataracts, same thing. The eye, the crystalline lens gets very, very dark and okay. So they go in and they just, they keep the capsule and they can go in and change the lens inside of it. So I'm going to just go sagittal here for a second. Cornea, all right, anterior chamber. All right, so this is where the aqueous humor is. The lens was going to, lens sits right behind that. I don't want to, it's attached by the ciliary fibers, right? <clears throat> okay, remember that lens can go uh, flat. It can get very, very convex, all right, for magnification, just like a magnifying glass. Up until about age 40, then we get presbyopia, <laughs> inability to do that. <laughs> People have trouble seeing up close. All right, so this would be the vitreous humor here. I'm going to just kind of move my scalpel through that, and you can see, that's really thick. All right, the viscosity is very, very deep. Now, this right here is actually retinal tissue. You can't really see how thin that is, but that's where all of the rods and cones are. Remember, cones, I always think color, center. All right, so the cones in the center, they're there for color. The rods are on the periphery, they're for low light. All right, I'm gonna show you the model later, but please realize that you're, um, I get this right. Cones can only see red, blue, and oh god, I red, blue, and green. All right, and from those three um, sensors, right, they can detect any color and any hue. It's absolutely mind-boggling. All right, so all right, so the students were asking me, and I told them before, this is the chloride layer, and if you notice, it's very, very dark. That's going to absorb any stray light. All right. And if you, you know, it's hard for you to imagine that. Remember, if you go to have a picture taken, a photograph, they always put a black, black or white um, cloth behind you to absorb any 
uh, stray light or a white one to reflect it back, okay? So I am gonna safely assume that that is not going on there too, so I'm gonna go to this other half. So I clearly did not do a um, very good sagittal cut. This is sort of a parasagittal cut, but there is, once again, cornea, aqueous humor, the pupil would be there, and then once again, that's not a structure, it's an anatomical space. Iris, you know, in humans, that would be the brown, green, um, hazel, you know, whatever. All right. There is that retinal material. That you see how thin that is? You probably can't. But in lab, you'll be able to see it. It's super, super thin. There's that vitreous humor. That's the crystalline lens. Usually sits back there. And then, I don't know where in the heck. Did I not do a very good job of cutting this? I don't know. Where? Oh. That's clean on there too. That's, so it's gotta be where it all comes together. In there should be a small area <clears throat> called the optic disc where they all come together. Maybe I'll cut right through it. Um, and that's a blind spot because there's no rods or cones there. All right. And off to the side is gonna be the um, Fovea centralis, which is where macular, um, yeah. Fovea centralis is where the majority of the cones are concentrated. That would be the area of um, most distinct vision. And if you watch someone doing something um, very, very fine-tuned, they will not look directly at it. They'll look off to the side a little bit. So they were focusing all of that light on the Fovea centralis, <laughs> if you watch that. I am going to apologize again <clears throat> for not being able to find the optic disc. But in lab, someone will will cut it. That might be it right there. Is that going? Yeah, there it is. Okay, that is. I guess I could hack that apart a little bit. But, yeah, that is right there. That's the optic disc. What's left of it? I, I don't know how in the world I managed to cut right through that. But I did. And that would lead right to Right on there too. All right, I'm gonna just grab a model here real quick. Um, try to keep this under 20 minutes. If I can, I'm gonna have to spill the off real quick. All right, so. This is this little model I got last year. It's just <clears throat> too cute, so I had to get them. All right. <clears throat> so cornea, aqueous humor, there's the pupil. There's the iris, right. and then remember, right behind this should be the crystalline lens, which will sort of come out, not supposed to. Oh, I can't see that. Sorry. <clears throat> right, crystalline lens. This is going to be the posterior chamber with that vitreous humor in it, <clears throat> which keeps everything shaped. Once again, if you're super nearsighted or myopic, the globe here is too long, all right? So light rays focus before the retina, and that's why they wear those glasses that are thin in the middle, thick on the outside. All right, refocuses that lens on the retina. But the bigger problem is the globe is so long with the vitreous humor that sometimes there's not enough vitreous humor to hold everything in place and this retina can detach. When you're also looking at the eye, or the eye model, I want you to start thinking about those muscles again. There's going to be two obliques, superior and inferior. There's going to be medial and lateral rectus. Right? Most of these are, some of these, well, no, not most of them are going to be the ocular motor, cranial nerve three, and then there's abducens and trochlear, which one very specific um, muscles in the eye. So you can learn them while you're learning it, memorizing it, figure it out. I'm gonna pop this guy over here once again. Careful, Santa's watching me. All right, All right. so I'm gonna pop this up here. So if we were in lab or if I was at a station, I would say what eye is this left or right? You would say that's not fair, Dr. Phil, and I'd say yes it is because that's the lacrimal bar. We know it's lateral, tears flow down here and they go into the canthus, medial canthus, and then they drain into your nasal cavity. 
you don't believe me, next time you cry, see if it runs, you know, down here, through your nose, whatever. So this is the right, the right eye, because you're facing your patient, all right? So your left is their right, you'll figure it out. All right, so there's the lacrimal gland, tears are running down that way. So this is right, this is gonna be lateral, this is gonna be medial, this is gonna be superior, down here is gonna be inferior. Cranial nerve two, all right, there is the insertion of something on the sclera. I remember we said, insertion always goes towards the origin. So when you're memorizing this, picture the action. If it's going to the trochlea, see that little hoop? Picture the action of what it's gonna do. It's gonna rotate and bring that eye in. So I'm gonna pop that out there. Anterior, okay. All right. Remember, this is gonna be black. It's gonna absorb, and we don't like hitting here. We want, we don't want it flashing back there. We want it to absorb. Okay, the cool thing about this model right here is it just shows you, these are the ganglion cells from the retina, all right? Goes to the bipolar cells, and then it goes to cranial nerve too. It just kind of shows you that. So when you're looking at this, just look at um, from the retina back, like what is the order? Because they like to ask that question, right? <clears throat> There's the inside of the eye. I'll put that crystalline lens back in there, more or less. Pop this back in there. So just when you get to lab, um, you probably won't have me, but whatever. Um, just kind of orient to yourself, or when you get to any lab practical, orient, look at the, whatever it is, don't panic, take a deep breath in, look at where it's pinned and see, you know, what, orient to yourself. That's the, the best advice I can give you. All right, so 22 minutes, I could have babbled longer, but there you go.